Dane County Parks celebrate an 80th anniversary and friends of Dane County Parks, well, in a lot of ways, they're just getting started. You'll get your personal invitation to join both today on For the Record. I'm Neil Heinen. I could spend the next few minutes introducing this show by talking about the extraordinary asset that is Dane County Parks, but I have three terrific guests who are here to do just that. So let's talk to Dane County Executive Joe Parisi, UW Life Sciences Communications Professor and former colleague and longtime <laughs> friend Patty Lowe, and Chair of the Dane County Parks Commission and friends of Dane County Parks, and a guy who'll have a park named after him one day, Bill Lunny. <laughs> You know, Bill, I think I just started something. <laughs> An editorial <Good> campaign. <laughs> Thank Lonnie you. Park. Thank you. I, 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 I'm honored. And the, the last time you and I did this, Patty, I was on your show. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, that's right. Back in the, in the public television days. Right. Well, thank you all for doing this. Um, so, Joe, I think this, uh, this is the second show that we've done on, on this particular event. And we've done something in Madison Magazine. I've done a few editorials. I'd like to think people mm -hmm. are starting to become aware of the Friends of Dane County Parks and what they're trying to accomplish here with a fundraising effort and drawing attention to this asset. But maybe you could just start by explaining the significance of the parks to the county. Yeah, well, well, as folks know, and, and, and actually a lot of folks don't know how many parks we have in Dane County. You know, depending on how you count them, we have upwards of 60 parks or <laughs> wildlife areas, pe places people can go hiking, biking, camping. We have equestrian trails, um, places you can go put a canoe in a river. You know, you name it, we have it. And these are all county parks. And so part of what we like to do when we're talking on shows like this is to remind people and, and let people know of that fact and that they should contact us if they're not aware of all the parks throughout the county to go to. They're, they're really, I believe, unrivaled when you look at, at county parks throughout the state, both for the number and the quality. And one of the ways we're able to have such a, a, a vast array of parks and the variety and really the, the high quality parks that we have is through partnerships because as with so many things that we do you know no one entity can do it all by themselves there's always much more need and and many more things we want to do than any one unit of government or organization can handle on their own so what we strive to do in county government is to partner with folks so that we can provide services like our zoo for example we partner with an organization called friends of the zoo to make our our free zoo much nicer than we would be able to have it just on our own. Sure. And so with the parks, we do the same things. We have friends of par local parks groups, lo local communities adopt a park, and they help with maintenance, they help with clearing invasives and doing projects and building paths. And what we're doing with, with, with this um, new endowment fund now is creating an additional resource that we can use to enhance and maintain all of the great parkland that we have. And um, before I ask Bill to talk about the Friends of the Parks a little bit more, um, the, the county provides a base level of services for mm -hmm. the parks. Mm -hmm but you can't provide all of the services that park users would, would benefit from. Is that the idea? Right, and we can't keep up with everything because there has been such an appetite for acquiring certain land before it disappears to development, especially land that, that, that has specific scenic value or that, 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 that provides access yeah. to, 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 to a river or something. You know, we've purchased the parks, we maintain them, we have a large park staff who do all the traditional stuff, um, but the enhancements that we're able to get because of these partnerships um, with our friends groups and that we'll be able to have through the endowment are going to make the experience so much nicer than, than any county could really accomplish on their own. Yeah. Hence your work, Bill. Yes. And, I mean, people, some people watching this are, are familiar with it from, from our previous show. So maybe give us an update on how it's all going. Well, first of all, our endowment, which is uh, approximately two years old now, uh, we already have uh, $250,000 in the endowment. We're on our way to $300,000. We're hoping to reach that by the end of this year. And what we're able to do is by having in individuals and corporations assist us, we're able to put together the kind of resources that, as Joe mentioned, will begin to assist our long-term, our friends groups and our other volunteer efforts. The county is growing. We have over half a million people now. We're on our way to three quarters of a million people. In many ways, that's good, but it presents a huge challenge for our park system as it grows. And as Joe mentioned, the county staff is not able to do this on its own. And so in many ways, the friends groups are picking up a lot of those, the, that work that had not been able to be done before. Friends groups provide significant uh, elements that are not able to be done, including, for example, 
programming in our county parks, uh, invasives removal. When we own land, we have to become the stewards of that land in perpetuity. And in order to do that, we really have a responsibility. And part of that is picked up by the friends groups. They can't do it alone, though. And that's what, where this endowment comes in, because the endowment will provide extra resources, and it already has, to those friends groups that will allow those yeah. groups to function in the future. Yeah. Stewardship into perpetuity, mm. Patty. That's such a great phrase. Um, before I ask you to talk about your role coming up in, in, in the 80th anniversary event, maybe just your perspective on all mm. this, your personal perspective on this. You know, when I was asked to be part of this, I, uh, I visited the Dane County Parks website, wonderful website, yeah. by the way, and as I was reading all the, the names of the parks in our area, I, there were so many memories graduation celebrations at that park shelter, wet, a wedding in this park, walking my dog in this park, um, my kids visiting Pheasant Branch Conservatory. Uh, there, were, there were so many memories and I realized, you know, how much Dane County Parks has really enriched my life yeah. and how con culturally consistent the whole idea of land stewardship is from a Native American perspective. Um, we have uh, a land ethos that we like to refer to as the seventh generation ethic, which is a concept that really promotes long range vision. Um, the idea that the decisions you make today, you make with consideration of the generations that come after you, seven generations into the future. So we're, we're trying to think 240 years into the future, what will be best for our children and grandchildren. And that's what I love about the endowment and about the, the work that the Dane County um, Friends of the Friends of the Dane County Park um, system really promotes. Yeah, me yes, too. Because, to, because I, I think you, you hit the two perspectives really uh, perfectly. There's this idea that we all we all have a park that we consider our own, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody in Dane County, they, that, that's, well, that's my park. That's right. my park. But then the seven generation approach is that we share sort of, I think, as, 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 a, as a community, ownership and responsibility for this system of parks. We benefit from the decisions that people made 80 years ago uh -huh. to establish Stewart Park. Exactly. And now we have an obligation to be thinking about what we can do to better the lives of the people that come after us. All right, I know you both have something to say about this. I'm going to get the first commercial break in and we'll come back and pick right. it up right after this. My guest this morning, Dane County Executive Joe Parisi, Bill Lunny, who is chair of the Dane County Parks Commission and the Friends of Dane County Parks, and Patty Lowe, UW professor, uh, former journalist, <laughs> uh, author, and, uh, and keynote speaker at an upcoming 80th uh, anniversary event for the parks that we will talk about. But Bill, I, uh, you were... Well, I just wanted to pick up on Patty's theme briefly, yep. and that is that the idea of an endowment is that it is going to pay off a little bit now, but really most of the resources are going to be going into uh, a, a pool that will be isolated from the operation of day-to-day -day government and eventually will build to a level of where it will be very self-sustaining and will allow for the long-term legacy that we're talking about that will really care for our parks for the future. So what we're thinking about with this endowment is to have that source of revenue that will really give us that, that capacity seven generations and beyond for yeah. our park system. Yeah. Were you familiar with, that, with the seven generation thing? Uh yeah, I'm, sure. yeah, I, I, I'm, just, I'm fairly, yeah, I'm fairly yeah. new to that concept. Yeah. I always think, I, I always think about the the saying that you don't plant oak trees for yourself. Right. You know, we exactly. all love oak trees and we enjoy them because someone a couple hundred years ago yeah. had the foresight to plant them for yeah. us. And so, yeah, I think I think we all believe that we have a responsibility. And you know, and and as as Bill said, there are things we can do now, and there are things we can do in the future. There are things we can do now that benefit the future. Another partnership we have is with an organization. I know you're very familiar with Operation Fresh Start, sure. um, a group that that works with young people ages 16 through 24 who maybe need a second chance in life. Um, one of the things we did um, in two budgets ago now, I believe, mm -hmm. is we created a youth conservation core in the Dane County budget. So what we've done. It's modeled after the old, you know, civilian conservation sure. corps. 
um, of the depression area. This is a youth conservation corps that takes a group of young people, they, a crew they call them, and um, they're, they're, they're county funded. And then they go into our parks and, and, and we get kind of d a double bang for the buck with it. We, we, we give these young people an opportunity to learn some skills and to have a second chance and kind of getting back on the straight and narrow. Well, at the same time, they're doing work in our parks and they're, they're getting rid of invasives, they're rebuilding park shelters, they're, they're fixing picnic tables. So that type of partnership is one in which the, the young people are getting helped and getting a second chance at the same time that they're doing work for our parks sure. um, that enhances the type of work and reflects the type of work that is done through the fr friends groups. Yeah. Also. One of the interesting transitions to that is that our first Dane County Park, Stewart Park, that we're celebrating the anniversary, in fact was the site of the Civilian Conservation Corps in 1935. Mm -hmm. So the, the way in which our county operates today and the understanding of the beauty of the relationship of uh, something like the CCC or in more recent times Operation Fresh Start are, is obvious and I think it provides again for not only the building of human resources but our natural resources and provides good economic benefits to our community. Yeah. I, um, the new editor of Madison Magazine, Karen Lincoln Michelle, is um, Native American. She's uh, a Ho-Chunk uh, nation. And, and so I'm, I, I, you know, as, as always, when exposed to different cultures, you start to see it in different ways. And the idea to me that, that Dane County, the role of Native culture in, mm -hmm. our, in our history sometimes gets overlooked, right. I think. And, and it was huge. For an Italian guy and a German-Irish guy yeah. sitting here to be able to talk about, because the parks are a place <clears throat> where Native American heritage is literally yeah. physically um, available to yeah. us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, are, there are burial mounds. There, are, there are historic sites. Um, you know, in fact, we came upon um, a, a, a Ho Chunk um, burial ground when we were um, beginning to build a bike trail recently. And so what we did as soon as we discovered that, we pulled back and we worked with the Ho-Chunk Nation um, to make sure that everything was done in a respectful manner, um, cataloged, and we, we moved around the, the trail to make sure that, that, that we were you know, doing so in a respectful way and in harmony with, with, with their wishes and history. So, so yeah, that relationship is real important. And I think you're right that, that the more we bring that re relationship to the surface and recognize it and talk about it, the better off we all are because they were here first. Yeah. Well, it just, it just seems, I, I love the fact that you've incorporated that, Bill, into sort of your thinking about the, well, and, the future uh, of the parks. We've done that with the help of people like Patty sure. and, and her academic credentials as well as her knowledge of the community. Because right now at McCarthy Park, under Patty's leadership and some of her students, and you may want I, to No, I, I don't want to take credit for that because it was really my, my student, Amanda um, DePachter. Yeah, but talk about her work. Ago. Uh, and this is what's really exciting. I didn't mean to no. interrupt you, Bill, but um, Amanda's final project in a class I taught Native American environmental issues in the media was this wonderful vision for an interpretive trail at McCarthy Park. Uh, she's a landscape architect major and was really excited about coming up with this uh, idea as a project. And the you know the only credit I can take is that I encouraged her to talk to the Ho Chunk um, and the parks people, and she did and and did it in a in a really respectful way. She talked to the Ho Chunk preservation folks, uh, people like Bill Quackenbush, and um, brought them in. There's this wonderful collaborative project now to create an interpretive trail at McCarthy Park. Um, with uh, traditional Ho Chunk um, structures and signage and interactive, I think there's a there's a, a phone number you can call mm -hmm. yes. for for more information. Moving and into the high tech world, yeah, yeah. A, a self guided <laughs> tour. And to me, that that's what's so exciting because um, parks are parks because individuals and groups and municipalities commit to them. And this, I think, is just a really terrific example of that. Yes, I agree. And actually, to, to follow up on that, um, one of the things that we have learned over the years is how important the community is in anything we do with our parks. And as Joe mentioned and as Patty mentioned, not only do we have the Native American community, but we have our more recent settlers. And for example, at Stewart Park, there was a park 
founded by the community 20 years before Dane County ever purchased that park. So often our parks grow up out of the community and the kind of recreational and natural resources and beautiful natural resources that we have. And that community then becomes the source of not only pride but support for that. And often out of that comes a friends group because then a friends group moves to the next level where they will then support that park now and in the future. And that again is where the endowment comes in because the friends groups needs that kind of financial and other, other support because they can't do it. They're just volunteers. But with some help from the county and through this endowment, we can then make a much more effective park system. Well, I want to I want to tell people exactly how they can help with the endowment. And okay. we'll talk about the 80th anniversary celebration when we come back right after this. We've returned on this for the record to the topic of the Dane County Parks and the friends of the Dane County Parks. And Joe Parisi, Bill Lunny, and Patty Lowe are my guests this morning. And I want to make sure people know about the 80th anniversary celebration, Bill, and, and w w what it entails and why, uh, why you're having this event. Well, first of all, the 80th anniversary is, is a critical time because it marks what has been now the progression of our county parks from where we started with a 47-acre park, Stewart Park, in number 1935, one. Number, number one, with a very visionary county board at that point that was willing to take that first step, mm -hmm. which was a big deal for them in, in those days. But then we've evolved to a point of now where, where we've already talked about over 12,000 acres of land with an incredibly diverse park system. And so the 80th anniversary is to celebrate all of the things that we've done during that period of time. We only have two and a half hours, of course. But it's going to be uh, on the 1st of September from 5 to 7.30 at the Lucier Family Heritage Center, uh, which is right south of the Beltline, part of Lake Farm Park and the overall Capital Springs Recreation Area. Yeah. And it will feature Patty Lowe, uh, who will be talking about w many wonderful things, but the brilliant and wonderful concept of the seven generations and how we need to play it forward because what we really need to do is think about things for that period of time. And that's where the endowment, that's the beautiful joining of the endowment and its future role with the ethics that we have with our native people and our county uh, or government. You've probably given us a little preview already, Patty, of what right. you're going to talk about. But. Well, when um, Bill contacted me, I had just published Seventh Generation Earth Ethics, which yeah. is a collection of biographies of Native American environmental figures in Wisconsin. And as a Wisconsinite, we grow up you know, learning about Aldo Leopold and Gaylord Nelson and all the great um, mainstream environmentalists. Um, but there are some pretty amazing, strong native environmentalists too, and I wanted to celebrate them in, in this collection. And really the central themes of the book, the idea of sustainability and paying forward yeah. and protecting um, the natural resources and quality of life for future generations was a theme that resonated with Bill. And when he asked me, um, I, I always do whatever Bill tells me. So many of us do. I mean, ta talk about visionaries. Yeah. This man has done so much for Dane County Parks, and so it was just really an honor for me to be part of this. Well, you and I started covering him when he was on the county board <laughs> right. many, many years right. ago. Now, listen, 300,000 is a nice number, Bill, but I mean, clearly, that's, that's just that's a floor. Correct. I mean, we, we need much more than that. Too. Well, yes, and, and you could ask could for, for, for a number. People ask me, and I, I say, you know, conservatively a million dollars. Right, right. And I think we need that over a period of time. That's why this Friends of the Dane County Parks Endowment is so important. The endowment is held by the Madison Community Foundation and the Friends Group that has been working hard. It's, it's a bunch of volunteer citizens who are working hard to support this and to build that endowment to that level. And it will require ultimately long-term legacy gifts. It will require long-term corporate partnerships. And it will actually benefit the county in other ways because what we're doing through this endowment 
is also opening up new sources of revenue that can assist the county and our county parks. It's tough on an annual basis to manage a budget, as County Executive Parisi would clearly mention. And so what we want to do is at the same time try to assist a little bit of that, not out of the endowment necessarily, but in other ways by opening up ideas and by building partnerships in the community that, one that once they realize how important county parks are can then benefit the day-to-day -day operation of our county parks through financial contributions yeah. as well. You know, you and I know municipalities in the United States who would give a lot to have citizens like this. Absolutely, it's true. As I mentioned... Working on behalf yeah. of something like, like yeah. our park system. Yeah, yeah. yeah. As I mentioned at the beginning of the program, I mean, that one of the big reasons we have the quality of life we do in Dane County is because of folks like this and because of all the partners and the people who get involved and don't just sit back and say, well, you guys are responsible for taking it all, but people take ownership. And, for example, through these friendships, that becomes, as you said, my park our park and so when people have ownership I, I, I think that's the, 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 the ideal sense of community that, that we all want to have and we all benefit from that. And doesn't it also Joe fit into a vision I think your vision as well for for, for the county and for land use in the county and the way our agricultural land and, and, and how our cities and communities are going to grow or, or not grow that the parks are such an important component of that 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 comprehensive view of things yeah absolutely the <clears throat> excuse me the land matters to everyone you know I was talking with a farm family yesterday who was talking about how important it is to them that we we, we keep this this division, this this buffer between some of our municipalities so that the land is still open. You know, for various reasons, everyone is connected to the land. And the more connected to the land we are, yep. the better we'll all be. And again, as you look around, you can look at different counties throughout the state. There's nothing quite like Dane County, and particularly when you consider the pressure on our population and the population growth. We have to be conscious um, about the way that we plan our growth and, and preserve our land. I think we've made this clear, Bill. Everybody's invited, right? Absolutely. September 1st, That's the public's correct. invited. Come on out, um, join in the celebration, and help support the parks. Yes, I just want to make one point quickly. You get 10 that seconds. We have. <laughs> 3,500 volunteers in yep. Dane County, wow. yep. and they all work very, very hard to support our park system. So, well, thank you, Patty. Nice to have you on, Joe. Thank good to you. see you again. Yes. We're going to come back and wrap up for the record right after this. My thanks to Joe Parisi, Bill Lunny, and Patty Lowe, and my thanks to you for joining us. We'll see you next Sunday on For the Record.